Spain was the superpower of the 16th century, and uh, not only did they conquer a vast empire in the Americas, but they also ruled much of Europe. Um, to do that, though, they needed to fight constant wars, and that, in turn, meant they needed cash. And that's where the, uh, the silver mines of South America became so crucial. Now, um, to obtain the silver, uh, they needed to have a source of labor. And Spaniards, of course, were, were very happy to go as prospectors. And the great silver mountain of Potosi uh, in present-day Bolivia uh, quickly became a boom town, despite its very remote and inaccessible uh, location, uh, 16,000 feet above sea level. But, of course, the Spaniards uh, who, wanted, who, who arrived there did not want to do the work themselves. They wanted to have indigenous labor to actually do the difficult and, and hazardous work of mining. Um, at first, they used a system called the encomienda, uh, which was modeled on European feudalism, uh, the idea that the Spanish lords would act as the guardians of the natives, and then the natives would in turn work uh, for the protection that the, the Europeans provided. Unfortunately, the diseases that the Europeans brought with them decimated the Indians, and, and the overworking didn't help much either. And so quickly, this, uh, this source of labor uh, ran short and had to be um, sort of uh, divided up um, in a more rational fashion. And so ultimately, the Spaniards relied on what was called the mita, which was the indigenous uh, labor rotation used for communal purposes by the Inca Empire itself. And so uh, every year, every community of Indians throughout uh, Peru, uh, the Viceroyalty of Peru, had to send uh, a percentage of its male labor force uh, to work in the silver mines to produce this for the Spaniards. And uh, of course, uh, nobody really wanted to go because the, the work was so hazardous and, and the, the, the altitude was so high. Um, and so special courts were set up uh, to administer the Mita. And uh, over the, the course of um, the, the 17th, 16th and 17th centuries, Potosi uh, produced uh, an unbelievable amount of money, if we were to tr translate into to modern uh, terms today, it would be uh, literally trillions of dollars worth of silver. Um, but all of that silver really uh, did not make a lasting effect either on Peru, uh, because it was shipped back to Spain, or even on Spain, because um, uh, Charles V, the king, and then his, his, his heirs, uh, spent the money as fast as it arrived. And so really it ended up in the coffers of the, the Fuggers, the bankers in Augsburg. Uh, who uh, sort of managed uh, the finances of the king um, and really paid the troops who were fighting in the Netherlands, in Austria, in, 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 uh, in Italy, all over uh, Europe. And of course, the, the, the money eventually, the silver eventually, is going to wind up all the way back in um, China. Uh, where uh, it's going to pay for the imports of, of Chinese uh, goods. And so the kind of, uh, in some ways, um, uh, Peru and Potosi became a vital link in an emerging global circulation of capital uh, that's it's really going to contribute to the origins of the modern economy that we have today.